Hello YouTubers, Hammy Tech, Hammy Technoid here, and here we are again in the green screen man cave. And today I'm finishing up my series on what I've called the realism, and this is part three I've called volume. Okay, and by volume, what I mean is the power that you put out from your speakers uh, relative to decibel levels. Okay, volume in decibel levels. So yeah, what we're going to cover today is what you need to have if you want your extremely realistic volume levels in the decibel range. Okay, so what we're talking about in a uh, in a real life situation, say you're at a concert or a um, you know instru instruments are being played, uh, the volume level that you want to be able to attain is the same level that you would have if they were in your room or you were at the event. Okay, so say you're at a rock concert and you're in, in a good seat back, maybe 10 rows back, right in the middle, the stage is right in front of you, and uh, you can expect to hear volumes in the S, uh, in the extremes of say 100 to 120 decibels. Now if you want to be able to create volumes in your listening room of 120 decibels without your neighbors getting too uh, crazy about you doing it, uh, you might want to get a set of good headphones. <laughs> Just get a good set of headphones, forget about the loud volumes in your room, in your house if you have neighbors because you're not going to be able to attain them and keep the peace. Believe me, I know. So yeah, get a good set of headphones. I recommend a set of Sony's, uh, Sony studio monitors, and you can crank those things up to unbelievable levels in your head. You can get excess of 100 decibels coming out of those things easily and you can experience the volumes levels that I am talking about in this video. But for those who want to experience the volumes that you can get at a live concert, you need, you need to have equipment that can handle it. And what I mean amplifiers, I mean speakers, I mean all the whole thing, you, uh, dynamic range expanders, I'm looking at my DBX 4BX there, yeah you got to have the dynamic range expanders and all that to make it sound real. The volumes you want are realistic volumes, you know, in the 100 to 120 decibel range. Now your speakers have a lot to say about that because your speakers are immediately affected by the power that are applied to them. And what we have in the world of speakers is called efficiency. And efficiency is basically what you, your speaker can do when it receives power. Uh, and it's rated in decibels per watt. Decibels per watt. And that is a, a, a rating that speakers get. Typically it's measured at one meter out, okay? So when you have a speaker that's rated at 90 decibels at one watt, that means you put a microphone out one meter from that speaker and it, at one watt of power it will produce a sound pressure level of 90 decibels. And for efficiency, the higher the better. You want to have anything above 90, hopefully, at least, above 90. Like in my rack here, I've got the Wolfa is rated at 90 dB at one watt. The mid-range setup I've got there is rated at 95 dB at one watt. And the, the tweeter is rated at 94 dB at one watt. So I'm running a fairly efficient system here. And what I can, I can compensate for the bass by turning up the volume on the bass. But uh, yeah, then you need the power to be able to push into those. And on this system, I've got the triamp system. I've got 550 watts going into the base cabinet, uh, 200 watts going into the uh, mid-range stack, and 200 watts going into the tweeter. So that's quite a bit of power, and that's each side. Okay, that's 950 watts each side. So that's a total of almost 2,000 watts for my system in here. And then for a more real realistic kick, I have the dynamic range enhancer the uh, DBX-4BX right there and uh, it gives the volume a kick according to how it was recorded and the levels of the, the sound in the recording. Now for speakers to be able to handle the power they need to have the power handling capacity if you're going to be pumping that kind of power into them otherwise you need extremely sensitive 
desktop speakers, really, really high efficiency ones. And the names that come to mind to me are Altec Lansing and Klipsch and JBL. Now, those were three brands that came out back in the day. They have been around for a long time. I know for certain JBL and Klipsch are still making speakers. Altec Lansing, I think, dropped out a while back. But uh, the L in Altec Lansing, or the Lansing in Altec Lansing became the JBL, the L of JBL. So uh, he was always in the uh, high efficiency range of speakers. And, and uh, the Altec Lansing got their fame from a speaker called Voice of the Theater. And I'm going to show some pictures here in my video of, of these speakers, the JBLs and the Altec Lansings and the Klipsch. And these are all very, very efficient speakers. And they, you notice they have a common, a common uh, piece that uh, kind of links them to their efficiency. And they're all horns. They're all designed around horn units. So horns are very efficient, but they have a horn sound. And if you are an audiophile, some people dislike the horn sound. Some people don't care because of the efficiency. Uh, and if you compensate with room reflection uh, cap uh, you know, devices that suck up the room reflections, horns can sound very, very good. And they're very efficient. So the power that you have is used very efficiently and uh, wisely. So yeah, if, uh, if you've got the power and you've got the speaker sensitivity, then you got the capability of playing volumes that reach concert hall levels. And that is what we're talking about when we're talking about the volume and the dynamic range and the realism. You want to have the realism of the volume. So I hope this, this uh, episode was helpful to you. You notice I didn't play any music because it would have been pointless for me to play music in a video where I'm trying to pr uh, show you uh, efficiency of speakers and such because I, only you can hear what's on your speakers. You can't hear what's on my speakers and how loud it is here. So I hope this was helpful to you. And this finishes up the series of the realism. And until next time, see you later.